Hello everyone, and we're going to be doing an in-depth review on the Sapphire Radeon HD 6450 1GB graphics card. Let's get started. First off, I'm going to be telling you what's inside the box when you get it. You'll get the card, a user manual, some important information, and the driver CD. Here is the box art for the graphics card. There is a 1 gigabyte version, a 2 gigabyte version, and I believe a 512 megabyte version. It is a 2.1 PCI Express X16 graphics card, meaning that you'll have to have that slot in your computer, in your motherboard in particular, to be able to use this graphics card. Now before you say, well I can't get it, my motherboard is 1.1 PCIe, well guess what? Mine is indeed a 1.1 and it works completely fine for me. You'll see on screen right now the Sapphire Tricks which you can download from the Sapphire site. Uh, and as you can see it's a 1.1 interface so it should still work with yours. As you can see here it is DirectX 11 supported. Here you can see that it has HD 3D technology. It also supports full 1080p HD. Has an HDMI port in the back also supports 7.1 HD surround sound. For the rest of the review, I'll be showing background footage of certain games like Oblivion, Borderlands 2, a PlayStation 2 emulator, and most likely the most sought after test, Minecraft. All the while, I'm going to be going more in depth about this card. The graphics card has a DVI, a VGA, and as stated earlier, an HDMI port. This card also supports dual monitor setup and even try a monitor setup if you have the much larger Flex version. If you plan to do dual monitor setup with the original version, you'll have to use the HDMI port with another port. The VGA and DVI are analog and cannot be used together at the same time. Real quick I'm going to read you off a couple things that are on the back of the box. One thing says advanced memory, experience of speed, responsiveness, and performance of ultra high bandwidth memory architecture. Another thing says AMD Accelerated Parallel Processing Technology. Tap into the massive parallel processing power of your GPU with AMD App Technology and tackle demanding tasks like video transcording with incredible speed. AMD Crossfire X and upgrade your 3D performance quickly and easily thanks to the plug and play AMD Crossfire X dual GPU support, meaning that you'll be able to have multiple GPUs when using this card. Now that we've gone over what this card has to offer, we're going to be tackling the requirements and then I'll close off with my final comments. First of the requirements are physical space that this card takes up. The card dimensions are listed as 5 and a quarter inch by 3.7 inches. On screen you can see that this card is actually fitting into an ATX computer case that's just under 4 inches in width. This picture is measured exactly where the card ends. You can see that it is actually a pretty small card. Next up is the power supply unit and the operating system. The card has a recommended 300 watt power supply unit, though this may not be accurate as my computer runs it cleanly on 220 watt power supply. The operating system required is at least Windows 7. I'm using Windows 7 Ultimate, but normal 7 should work just fine. Lastly, as mentioned previously, this card needs a PCI Express X16 slot. The higher the slot number, the better the output. For my last few notes, I'll say the self-learned pros and cons of this card. The pros are it's a cheap card, it's a good card, and it's a small card allowing for slimline computer uses, and it has faster video rendering. The cons are I had to disable GPU acceleration for web browsing because the card caused computer freezes when loading YouTube videos or any form of flash related objects like pictures or any of that so I really couldn't surf the web until I figured out how to fix that. I also had to put the card in the correct spot then move it in by pressing one side of the card down and then pressing the other side all the way down feeling like I was breaking the card when I actually wasn't. Lastly the card can get really hot when playing games mostly graphics intensive games and can cause damage to your PC unless kept cool so that's about it for this card. All in all, I think it's a pretty good card, and I was scouring the web for a you know, better graphics card for my type of computer because it's a slim line with a bad PSU, so I finally came across this card. It works wonders. Uh, my computer specs will be on screen now. It is an e-machines 
EL1358G 51W and this card is definitely the fix for that computer. It allows it to play older games and some newer games. As you can see it played Oblivion pretty well actually and uh, yeah I think that you should get this card if you want just a graphics card that you don't plan to play you know Battlefield 4 at highest settings and fastest view distance on Minecraft or anything like that but it should suit your needs for what you most likely want to use it for ie probably Minecraft so you should be able to play Minecraft cleanly as you can see the PS2 emulator was a little choppy here and there but for the most part it was able to run it so I I say get this card, especially if you have the same computer I do, because it boosts the computer about 200%, I'd say. So, thanks so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.